To get a sense of what Nigeria feels like on the ground, we have invited Hamza Idris, who is Group Politics Editor of the Daily Trust in Abuja, Nigeria, and he joins us via Skype. Hamza, good evening, and thank you so much for joining us on The Globe. Good evening. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Hamza. Now, we understand vote counting has started. Tell us more about that. Well, it is very interesting because um, um, vote casting has closed uh, as early as five in some places, but the official time of closure should have been 2 p.m. Uh, but uh, the Electoral Commission extended it because of the hiccups that we witnessed in some polling centers across the country. Mm -hmm. And then, as you are aware, we have about um, 120,000 uh, polling units across uh, 36 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory. Mm. Now, so what does the voter really turnout like? That our, well, um, from the feelings we have across the country, it's um, impressive when you compare it with um, what we have uh, in the past. Because uh, in 2015, we had little above um, 40%. Mm. But we don't know for now until um, when the tallies are completed. But for now, from what we have across the country is that people have actually defied so many odds, have gone out to cast their mm. Now, were there any incidents of violence or any disruptions in any of the regions or provinces? Of course. Um, at, at this hour, uh, we have incidences in at least eight states, and then we have a record which has been confirmed about 16 people killed. But um, this is what has been recorded today, which is the uh, voting day. But in the build up to the elections, uh, we recorded over 260 deaths in so many incidences. Uh, as a result of uh, campaigns by various political parties. And were there any threats from uh, Boko Haram? Um, for instance, we understand that there was an attack in Maiduguri uh, by Islamic State. Uh, are there any details regarding that particular attack? And were there any um, you know, threats from Boko Haram itself? Of course, there yeah, were threats by the Boko Haram. Uh, and ISWAP, you know, we have two factions now. We have the ISWAP faction and then we have the Boko Haram led by Shekau. Um, they issued several threats in the build up to the elections, especially in the frontline states of uh, Borno, Yobe, and Adamawa states. And, and the this morning, there were uh, blasts, especially around Maiduguri, uh, about uh, four or five kilometers outside the state capital. Yeah. Hamza, how do ordinary Nigerians feel about the two front runners and uh, President Buhari and his contender, um, Atiku Abubakar? It is a clear departure from what we had in 2015. Uh, because, you know, Nigeria with a population of over 180 million people, and then uh, we have um, this issue of rotation, we have issue of religion, all these are key factors that determine who wins or who the voters will support. Uh, this was what we had in 2015. But this time around, the two leading contenders are both Muslims. They are from the north. They are Fulanese. And all the two of them are over 70 years. So the voters are now using different templates in deciding who to go for. There are some who believe that um, Buhari uh, he's fighting corruption. Uh, he's a sincere fellow. And there are some who believe that uh, Achiku is a business savvy fellow. Uh, he will turn around the economy and uh, he will most likely carry young people along. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the variables that the voters are putting on the table. Now, Hamza, has there been any talk among the politicians with regards to um, anyone suggesting or making suggestions with regards to the winners at this point in time? Has there been any information forthcoming or is everyone waiting for the official announcement once the vote counting has been done? 
Well, the two leading contenders are upbeat. Each one of them is saying that uh, he has the wide outreach to win the election. But uh, the Electoral uh, Commission has warned that people should not release results. But uh, because counting has started, and part of the electoral guideline is that um, results should be announced at the polling units. And we have over, about over 120,000 of such polling units. So we have started receiving results from some of these polling units. And somewhere you had the electorate saying uh, Atiku has won. In some places, you had people saying Buhari has won. For instance, Buhari has won is in his polling unit in Daura. And he has won in Atiku's polling unit in Adamawa State. But um, surprisingly, Atiku has won in one of the polling units at the presidential villa, which is the seat of power in Abuja. But all these are just units where you have a little up 1,000 people voting in that place. And you are now thinking of getting results from over 72 million voters. Now, Hamza, let's speak about uh, observer missions in the country during the voting process, the run-up to um, the vote which took place today and uh, the, the postponement from last week, Saturday. What are the observer missions saying? Has there been any official statements coming through from them with regards to the voting that took place today? No, they didn't issue um, uh, a single uh, press statement in respect to what transpired today. Because uh, as a convention, uh, they come together, and we have about 28 of them. We have um, uh, over uh, 120 of domestic and foreign observers. But foreign observers, we have 28. So we expect them to give probably an interim report by tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But today, most of them have gone around the uh, federal capital and the systems of the federation. Hamza, that's where we'll leave it. Thank you for joining us. That is Hamza Idris, who is a group politics editor of the Daily Trust in Abuja, Nigeria, joining us via Skype. Now, for more on the Nigerian election, we are joined by a professor of African politics, development and international relations from the University of Pretoria, Christopher Isike. He is a member of the Nigerian Unity South Africa, NUSA, an umbrella body guarding interests of Nigerians living in the country. Prof, good evening and thank you so much for joining us. You've just ha heard our um, discussion with Hamza Idris and he's just giving us an update. Vote counting has started do we know the results date when are we expect when are they expecting to release the official results and uh, he mentioned Hamza mentioned the fact that uh, in some areas where for instance the presidential uh, polling station uh, there's belief that uh, the opposition party leader has won that state you know let's let's talk about those little dynamics vote results and uh, the different uh, candidates <laughs> 